Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios C Sharp Programming Tutorials. Today is tutorial number 10 and we are going to be going over error handling. So uh, it's going to be a very fun ride. Even if you have seen the Java Programming Tutorial series, I strongly recommend that you stick around for this one. Uh, because C Sharp handles errors a little bit differently than what most other uh, most other programming languages do, specifically Java programming. So, without further ado, um, also we are going to be reverting back to some older stuff. We are not going to be building upon any of the previous. Um, previous skills that we had used before. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm fully aware that my last couple of videos have been extremely long and I'm attempting to try to reduce that length as much as possible. So the first thing we want to do is we want to call in a float num1, num2, and answer. Set answer equal to zero. Go ahead and close that out. And then we're going to call in a character and this is going to be operation um, you're more than welcome to put in a do again character and put in that while loop if you like. But again, for the sake of time, I'm going to avoid it for now. So we're going to go ahead and do console.write line. And we're going to go please enter the first number in the equation. Num1 equals convert dot two single we're going to console oops console dot read line and then close that all out so now we're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it once uh, we could paste it twice but it's going to take just as long to adjust the code as it would to just freshly write it all over again so we're going to change this to second and num two and that'll solve that. And then we are going to go ahead and go down and write another console dot write line. Parentheses, please enter the type of you would like to you would like to perform. Put parentheses plus minus oops commas not periods minus times and divide console dot convert actually we know we want to do operation equals convert dot two uh, we're going to change this up and go to character this time because operation is a character and not a float um, we're going to go console dot read line and I do want to take a moment to remind you guys that the only difference between a single and a double is that a double is twice as large as a single. So that's a pretty easy way to remember it. Also, the difference between a, um, a single or a float and an integer is that an integer only accepts whole numbers. It has to be a round number whenever you're plugging in an, uh, an integer, whereas a float will accept decimals out to 16 places, I believe. So, I hope that is a nice, friendly reminder for you guys, uh, for those of you who had forgotten or just wanted a friendly reminder. Um, so now we're going to move on and create a large if statement. We're going to go operation equals equals plus, and we're going to go ahead and copy this. And the reason why I put single quotes is because it is a character, and characters are defined by single quotes, whereas strings are defined by double quotes answer equals num1 plus num2. Alright, we're going to go ahead and copy this entire if statement, paste it, and we're going to go ahead and put else in front of it, else if. Um, now here's a neat little trick. I know I was telling you guys before that you don't want to hit backspace to untab them because it will just delete it, whereas you can highlight everything and hit tab and it'll tab over. Well the way you untab things without deleting them is you hold down shift and then push tab and that will back tab it once and then you can retab that and ta-da you have yourself a lovely um, properly formatted setup and we don't need an equal sign here we need a plus and then down here we need a minus and we can change this to a minus as well and now we just need to copy this entire guy again Oops. 
copy him once more paste him again again you can back tab it you can do it later or now I'm a neat freak so I need to do it now times and we're gonna change this to times and once more and we're gonna change this to divide and same thing here now, if you were to run this right now, it would pick up, uh, if you were to run this and do 1 divided by 0, it would pick up that it was a division by 0 error, and it would automatically run this. That's part of the advantage of running C Sharp, is that it automatically does minor error handling. So, some of the things you need to be paying attention to uh, for error handling will be specifically when we get into uh, object user interfaces later on, and when we get into Windows applications, because those are not so forgiving and you need to actually create different forms to catch those errors and let people know that they're doing something wrong. So just to give you a general idea of how you could handle certain errors, you could type try around the entire if statement and again we're going to use our tab all function and then close those parentheses so that we have that there and then we're going to go catch and in parentheses around that, we're going to go arithmetic exception. And close those in parentheses. And if you wanted to, you could type in a, a message to send to the people, but I don't believe it's going to show up in this case anyways. So usually if you did a catch, say for instance you were doing a Windows form and you had a Windows form called error handle, or error, a uh, Windows form called error, you do like a... Uh, and you had an instance of it called er. You do er dot show parentheses, and then whenever an arithmetic error came up, it'd pop up that er dot show to let them know that, or that error window to let them know that they've done something wrong, and then they could change it before it, they tried to push it through again, which would in potentially avoid fatal crashes of your uh, your program, therefore making it more robust, therefore making it more user friendly which again as I've stated probably a thousand times by now is our primary goal as programmers so in the last bit we want to do is we would just want to go else and when we want to say console dot right line because we are good programmers we need to tie up all the loose ends we need to go sorry that operation is not permitted close that. You can actually put a period, make it a proper sentence. And that would be, oh, never mind, that is not the end of the program. We also need to return the values, so write line, and we need to put answer and console dot read so that it pauses so they can see the answer. I'm going to go ahead and hit F5, and and as you can see, we have please enter the first number. So we're going to go ahead and do 1 divided by, or 1 divided by 0. And it's going to return infinity, as I stated. Um, if, however, somebody was able to manage that, uh, for instance, let me go ahead and hit return and run it again. If we were to do, say, 500 times. Uh, some obnoxiously large number that would obviously return a number that's too large for the float. And we're going to do times. It's going to return that properly. Um, the issue with <laughs> the issue with C sharp is that it catches so many of the natural errors by itself that it's kind of hard to call up an error, especially in the arithmetic area. But I guarantee you these will come in handy in the following tutorials. The main issue is that I want to show you how to properly format a try and catch statement. So you enter the try block, you put whatever the operations are that you want to try um, into the try block, and then once you're done with that, you close it, open up a catch block, and then you define what type of exception you're looking for. Um, usually you know which one you can anticipate the users to put in. So for instance, with a division, you can anticipate a divide by zero error. 
and the only thing is that C sharp catches that automatically. So you can put a divide by zero or arithmetic error if you want to catch a more general field of errors. And then you can put in something inside here to let them know that they've done something wrong and then send them back down the loop. So C sharp is definitely an easier programming language compared to Java. But if you guys do have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as I said, I look forward to seeing you next time.